Hey guys, how y'all doing? I'm gonna pour a dram here and have a talk. I was thinking about distilling, making a mash, but it's just dang cold. It is cold wherever uh, you are. I hope you're warm, but here it's cold. I made this a year ago um, and I just pulled it out of the barrel a couple weeks ago and it has some beautiful color in it. We'll talk about that. Um, so it's coming to the end of 2022, and I just started to reflect a little bit about my year in distilling. I haven't done this more than a year, almost two years. I've been doing this almost two years, and I've, all I've learned has been on YouTube. I've talked about that before. But anyway, what it made me start to wonder about you know some of the things that I have learned and what can I share to people who have a still like this it's kind of hard to find information uh, on the YouTube about those these type Olympic stills um, this blogs neat has one she runs one uh, tech ingredients runs one and that's how I started that's kind of what got me going um, and it's been a little while since I've made uh, a video and, and I just enjoy doing that as well. It kind of helps, um, you know, with what we do, um, sharing our knowledge. Um, so where to start? I had a lot of runs this year. I made nine different recipes. Uh, that's nine different spirit runs, uh, plus two faints runs. And my spirit runs, the way that I do them is I make a mash and I'll make that mash four times and I'll run it four stripping runs to get the low wines. That gives me enough to fill my 10 gallon pot with low wines and double distill that down. And that's my spirit run. So it takes me five runs per recipe uh, to get drinking alcohol, what I like to consider drinking alcohol. Uh, I made a lot of different things this year. That's a lot of runs, by the way. Um, I made all grains. Uh, I made sour mashes, sugar shines, uh, half and half and halves, you know, half sugar, half grain, half smoke, um, a couple faints runs. Um, I just want to give a shout out to John Miller, who's helped me quite a bit with uh, given some some direction here of helping me with my sugar shines um, and he makes some of the best grains sells some of the best grains malted grains and that that's who I get all my stuff from um, Steaky Creek Heritage Malt uh, it's done right you know what it's done it's a fair price and uh, it's a fair product it's really good uh, and a lot of his stuff is smoked and that's what I get um, he cold smokes it and it's fabulous. That I love that flavor. Uh, Alan Bishop, I'm running an, a recipe of his uh, out of One Piece in a Time Distilling Institute. This is a really good book. Um, if you're new to distilling, um, like me, uh, it's a good read. It gives you a good philosophy, a good basis uh, to kind of uh, understand what you're doing, uh, and really good, thoughtful. Uh, in so many different areas. Um, uh, I also want to mention that Alan Bishop has the Distillers podcast, and if you're not listening to that, you should uh, give that a listen. There's fabulous content on there. A lot of really smart people talking all kinds of distilling related stuff. And even though what we do is small, right? I've got 10 gallon. Um, uh, there's a lot of five gallons. Uh, there's a lot of eight gallons, uh, you know, there's a lot of us that are running small stills. The Verver, Viver, it's a five gallon, you know, we're all running little stuff. So, uh, Alan does that, is, has done that in the past. He does some stuff uh, on his channel where he's running uh, small five and eight gallons, Olympics and pots and, you know, very knowledgeable guy. He should be listening to Distillers Podcast. And that's my plug. Anyway. Um, so all year I've been running things uh, and, and, and good things and doing different stuff with them, putting wood in them, uh, putting them in barrels, turning it into apple pie. 
Um, and all year long, I have noticed that I have a pot funk, this funky uh, herbal vegetal kind of pungent, really pungent, strong, super strong um, a flavor that comes through on all of my new make spirit and to differing degrees. Uh, and it's bothered me all, all year long. Um, so I didn't know if that was normal. Uh, it concerned me though, you know, but I was also getting a lot of flavor. Like my rye, I made some, some all grain rye and I made some uh, all grain malted rye. I made uh, a rye sour mash um, and a rye sugar shine. And those were all really good, but they all had funk. They all had that funk, but they also had a lot of rye. I, I did corn, I had a lot of corn. I did uh, malted barley, uh, peat smoked malted barley. They had a lot of that come through, but always this super, super funk. Um, and so I tried to do some things to, um, to lessen that, you know. Um, I made sure that, well, for one thing, it's proportional to the amount of grain that I'm using. I have figured that out. I, I, it took me a while, and I'm not that smart, but I, it eventually dawned on me. If I'm making an all grain versus a sugar shine, they're two different animals, right? They're two different animals. Um, use good grain. I, I, like I said, Stinky Creek Heritage Malt, John Miller's grain is what I use, and it's fantastic. Um, let the jars breathe, right? When it comes off uh, my still and it's hot, I'll put a uh, coffee filter on top and just put, you know, put the band on it and the coffee filter and I'll let it sit in uh, every cut jar. And it'll just sit on the table for at least 24 hours. And uh, the most I've done is 48, I had let and it turned out great. And so this year I'm going to explore that a little bit more. Maybe go 48, you know, 36, something like that, two, three days, and see if that doesn't help reduce that pot funk. It did, um, it didn't hurt it at all. I'll say that. It turned out to be a great spirit on, on, on the one that I let go a little longer. Because usually I try to do it the next day. That's what I've got going on. Um, obviously, I'm double distilling. Uh, when I first started, the first six months, uh, I kind of ran it as a one-off, you know, and, and, and just a single pass distillation. I wasn't getting high ABV. I wasn't getting good. It was just, there was a lot of flaws in it. Um, so I don't do that. Um, I've started to invert my sugar um, to see if that would help that pot funk. Um, it didn't, but it did take care of any sugar sting that I get. Or that I've been able to, when, when I run my sugar shines, I don't get any of that, no sugar stain. Um, I put it in wood, I put it in barrels, uh, and it seems that that's what this spirit likes most is barrels. Uh, I put spirals in jars and that works good, but it works really fast. And so it works quicker than the funk is dissipated. But when I put it in a barrel, um, the barrel seems to attack it more. Um, and, and especially if it's a good quality barrel. Um, and then a lot of it I've turned into apple pie. And, and uh, this time of year, everybody loves apple pie. They want to get that in their Christmas stocking. Um, but all year I've been really scared of the funk. Uh, a quick little story here. Uh, I ran into a person that gave me a jar of shine uh, from uh, one of the locals here, and it's bad. It's low proof, uh, it's hot, it burns, there's tails in it. Uh, I don't know this person, but, but it's just bad, you know? And I wouldn't have known that had I not been doing this. It, so that's interesting to me that I, I can pick up on stuff like that. Um, you know, and, and, and yeah, I'm surprised myself. Um, maybe a couple months later, I got a jar from somebody I do know. 
and uh, and this is beautiful. This is about 50%. It's a white corn, a white, a smoked white corn uh, made on a still with a thumper, uh, and it's it's beautiful. This I'm not going to try this because you know, uh, and this isn't for drinking. This is this is my um, this is my standard jar. This is what I'm trying to make now. I don't know that I can, but it's a great goal, right? It smells like uh, soft corn, just just like cream corn simmering. Mm -hmm. At first, it just tastes like spring water, and then it's just this nice yellow flavor that's creamy. There's smoke in there. A lot, not a lot, but it's there. It coats your mouth, it's dry. It's delicious is what it is. It's just, just that gum delicious. This is something that I'm gonna try to make. That's my goal this next year is to work on this. Um, there's no funk in that. There's, there's some funk in this and some other stuff, but in, in this, it's not there. And so once I tasted this, and, and, and that's, as a new distiller, let me back up, as a new distiller, you can learn things from the people around you. Like I didn't know anybody that made shine before I started this, and now I know a couple people, uh, and they're happy to share what they know. And it's helped me tasting theirs compared to what I make, it's helped me to really analyze what I'm making. Now, I don't exclusively drink my, my product. I drink other stuff too, um, just because I like it. I like the variety. But anyway, um, you can learn a lot by the people around you. And it really made me scared that I'm doing something wrong because everything I get is funky as hell. And it's almost undrinkable. Like if I don't do something with it, it's like shit, you know? But um, there are people that, like I said, you can, you can talk to. And uh, I reached out to Alan Bishop at One Piece at a Time Distilling. And uh, he was nice enough to, to talk with me and help me out a bit and kind of reassure me that I'm on the right track. And uh, it was good to hear because like I said, you find a lot of information on column stills and thumpers, uh, but you don't find a lot of information on pot stills. Uh, like I said, he has one uh, and he runs it and is happy to share that. Uh, this blog's neat. She has one and runs what? Tech ingredients, but that's it. And Alan's written a book and he's smart. <laughs> anyway, we talked about several things. Um, the yeast matters in an all grain, really, EC1118 Fleischmann's uh, is what I'm going to start using when I'm using a lot of sugars, more sugars, and maybe double pitching. I don't know. Thought about that. We'll see. Um, better control on my measurements, especially with enzymes. Try to get more enzymes out of my grain and less artificially. We talked about aging because I, I let him know I was putting it in barrels and kind of what my cuts are, you know, and I'll, I'll make sure I go, you know, deep into, I, I won't say deep into the hearts, but I'm, I'm getting way out of the heads uh, when I cut in. And I cut out really, I think too early. Um, you know, where I said I'm cutting out at 65 to 68% alcohol uh, for stuff that I put in a barrel, I should be going down to about 50%, uh, especially if you're gonna, you know, like I said, age it in a barrel uh, where it's gonna sit for a, a long period of time. Um, We'll talk about that in a second. Um, excuse me, I took some notes. I'm gonna make sure I don't miss anything here. Um, the big thing is that we talked about in order to, to, to get a more neutral spirit is to rectify it more. And how do you do that with an Alembic? Um, so I'll show you what, what he suggested. Okay, so here we go. This is a cold finger, and you can find these on some stills in Scotland. 
uh, and it helps to rectify the spirit as it comes up the, the neck, right? Um, the, the, the steam generates up, it, it recondenses in the onion, and eventually it gets warm enough that it starts to come up the neck. And then you put a, just a little cold finger right here, cold water in, and it just circulates around the, the neck, uh, cold water back out into the, you know, wastewater. But all of the vapor that's in contact with the copper, even though the copper's hot here, boom, it gets cool enough that it recondenses and comes back down. Now there's the vapor in the middle that doesn't come in contact with the copper uh, that's gonna escape anyway. And so you're still gonna get, you're gonna get your outflow. But anyway, that's my project for 2023 to help uh, rectify my spirit and reduce that pot funk. That's my whole thing this year is what I'm trying to do. And we'll see what happens. But, you know, this is gonna be really interesting. It, it screws tight. I can get it to screw in where it's really tight. Uh, I can put more wraps around it or I can take less wraps off. Um, I've got a little valve on it here so I can control <clears throat> the flow of water and see. Uh, so I got a lot to experiment and a lot to play with this year. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so yeah. Peat, a lot of peat, smoke. Uh, oaky, this is real oaky. Uh, there's some underlying fruit that's juicy. Uh, kind of medicinal, anest anesthetic type feel, flavor. It's delicious. This is delicious. I made this a year ago. Um, and I put it in this barrel right here. And I bottled it a couple of years ago. There's no peat, there's no pot funk in this whatsoever, none. All this color is out of the barrel. I made it a year ago, and this is, this is what I'm after, and this is why I started distilling. And, and after almost two years, I think I'm, I'm coming into where I can start to figure out what I like and what I'm doing. And, and I'll know that by the end of next year. But here's why I say that. So a year ago I made, I had this um, scotch peated barley malt and I had enough to make two spirit runs. And the first one I, I barreled January 1st, 2022. And the barrel, uh, it's this barrel right here. And you can see it's kind of, uh, it's got staining on it and a little bit of like dried up what was uh, Madeira wine. Cause I put Madeira in it, about three quarters full of Madeira, uh, about eight weeks before I put my new make spirit in it. So what's coming across now is is the peated barley, uh, and that comes across really nice. Um, and to Alan's point, we talked about making, making cuts deeper, and absolutely, what I'm tasting here is is a higher proof dis, higher proof cut um, flavors like you would find in uh, Port Charlotte. Uh, or um, Kalila, those, those two distilleries make high cuts um, and they get those, those medicine notes, anesthetic notes in their whiskeys. And these are Scotch whiskeys from the island of Isla. Uh, deeper cuts give more of the tar and asphalt and those type of grungy flavors that you get with an Ardbeg or Lafroy. Um, and I think I miss those. Uh, now I redistilled all my uh, tails into faints, so they're in a barrel somewhere and I'm, I'm looking for them. But anyway, I think had I made 
deeper cuts, this would be a different profile for sure. And now that it's been in their barrel for a year, um, so this is a small sample that I poured of the same spirit that I made a year ago that I didn't put in the barrel because I wanted to compare. This is still funky. It still has a lot of pot funk. There's a lot of peat that I find in here, but the, the pot funk is gone. It's just, it's just morphed into all kinds of good flavors. Honestly, it's delicious. So this year, uh, I'll be able to do that more. I've got more barrels. Uh, I've got about six, and my plan is to just rotate those every two months. So in a couple months, I've got another recipe that I worked on, and, and I'll know what that tastes like. Now, saying that, these barrels, you gotta stay up on them. And, and I found that with uh, wood chips especially, and I only used those once, but it happened real quick. And, and spiral, uh, spirals, wood spirals. And you put them in a jar. If you don't keep up with them, you'll over oak things, you know, quicker than you think, especially if, if you're trying to, uh, to really, if you think longer is better, sometimes that's not the case. Um, so these barrels, this, this one that's been in for a year, I, it doesn't need to go longer. The oak is any more will overtake everything. So what I'm looking for is balance, and, and you got to try these barrels every now and then and, and look for the balance. Where's your spirit at versus where's the barrel at, and what's talking to you? Um, so that's going to be real fun to, to have that discussion this year. Um, so i got a lot of things to look forward to. So with that being said, I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday Season, a Happy New Year. Love those around you. Remember what's important. Uh, take care of your neighbors. You know, do the right thing. Peace out. Talk to you on the other side.